Arla Kino is by far one of the most anticipated characters in Genshin Impact, and I have been enthralled into the FAP Nation thanks to her. I know a lot of you are really into the FAP Nation, but for me, FAP was always a second option, especially when I mained Xiao for so long, but I decided to take on Dia as a Pyro main, and Dia has been my go-to for a good FAP. But now that Arla Kino is here, I can really take on this fire ass playstyle. Arla Kino is one of the characters that seems complicated on paper but turns out to be really simple to play in practice. Despite her having a scripture of an upcoming rapture as her skill description, I'm going to dive in and simplify her to make things very easy to understand. Now, let's all fap together and embrace this fire ass playstyle. Let's dive into the hellfire that is Arlequino's kit. Arlequino has a mechanic called Bond of Life, and that's the main gimmick of her kit. Bond of Life has existed in the game already, but Arlequino takes it to the next level. Essentially, when she gains Bond of Life, she will be infused with Pyro and reap the souls of the disgraceful vagrants that dare step under her feet. So Arlequino is quite unique as her normal attacks have a unique mechanic. This is the main part of her kit and this is also where all of her damage is coming from. Let's go through the next portions, however, and see how she works and I'll be referring to her normal attacks along the way. So her skill is what starts the process for Arlequino. Before any of her supports hit the field, it's important to start with using her skill. This will allow the gauge to fill on enemies. Using a charge attack will let you inherit the gauge, and then your normal attacks will be greatly enhanced and infused with pyro that cannot be overridden. We don't want to do that yet though, because it will take about 5 seconds for the gauge to reach its peak on the enemy, so we will take this time to do other things. Firstly, however, you are presented with a choice when you use Arlequino. Let me explain the ins and outs of her burst. Her burst is the one and only healing opportunity for Arlequino, and it does do a decent amount of damage. The downside is, is that it clears your bond of life, so it is important to not use it whenever you feel like it. Arlequino is on the tanky side, but she will still need to use her burst unless you're running her with Zong Li to keep her alive. Another big note is that her burst will reset her elemental skill, allowing two casts of the elemental skill to help with energy. She drops roughly 4-5 to five particles, which is great for her energy needs. There are two playstyles that you can use with Arlequino, using the burst or skipping the burst. If you run her with Zhongli, using the burst will be a quote unquote DPS loss in the eyes of spreadsheets, but we live in a practical world, so let's talk about when you want to use her burst and when you want to skip it. The goal of Arlequino is to keep your bond of life high. The higher her bond of life, the more her normal attack damage will be increased. This damage will outweigh the benefits of using her burst slightly from the second rotation onward. If you sacrifice energy recharge substats to use her burst every rotation, then this is indeed a DPS loss. However, you may find yourself with 120-130% to 130 energy recharge just from her natural substats, and if you're running her with someone like Favonius Bennett, then you should easily be able to burst every rotation with ease since she generates many particles for herself and her burst cost is only 60. If she is in teams like Mono Pyro, her burst will not be an issue to refill at all. How much does she heal from her burst though? Well, if you use it immediately after casting her skill, then she'll heal roughly half her health. But, if you use it after 5 seconds that her skill's been active, then you will get a full heal. It's very important to make sure that her skill is active on the enemy when you activate her burst, because she's not healing anything if you don't have that skill active. She needs that skill to hit an enemy and then use her burst to actually heal a significant amount. Otherwise, you're healing like 2k of her health or something like that. As I hinted at earlier, if you don't need the healing, then from the second rotation onward, recasting your skill and not using her burst will actually make Arlequina retain a higher bond of life, therefore increasing her overall damage. This is going to be the case with a good shielder, where she is taking no damage and doesn't need healing. So there are two ways to play Arlequina. Option A, hey, I can burst every rotation without issues, so why not? Option B, her burst is a DPS loss. I am not taking damage and I'll just keep the bond of life high. And secret option C, I don't give a shit about a slight DPS loss. I'll burst every rotation because rotation go burr. 
At the end of the day, in an ideal situation, using her burst is a DPS loss if you're able to dodge every attack and take zero damage. But we do not play in ideal situations. You will be taking tick damage and you will be taking real damage, so bursting once per rotation seems funner in my eyes, and we play the game for fun. If you want to squeeze out more damage and are able to never get hit with Arlecchino and don't care about the burst, then sure, just skip it all. But remember, we don't live in spreadsheets. And at the end of the day, if you can clear Abyss within 3 minutes, it literally doesn't matter. So play whichever way you actually prefer. So let's talk about her rotations. We will run through this two times depending on which way you want to use Arlecchino. Firstly, if you want to use her burst. You will use her skill, burst, and then her skill again. Then, you will swap to your teammates to buff. That should take roughly 5 seconds, which is enough time for Arlequino's gauge to be ready to be obtained. You will use a charge attack to inherit the gauge, and you will notice that there is now a gauge over your health bar. This will decrease as you do normal attacks, but you shouldn't worry too much about that because you'll be able to keep up the gauge indefinitely. From here, you will spam your normal attacks on Arlequino, and in doing so, the second part of her elemental skill will activate. The cooldown of her skill will decrease with every normal attack that lands. So a good indication of when you're ready to swap off of Arlequino is when her skill comes back up. By then, your character's buff should be running out. You can, however, keep on going if you have a longer rotation with characters like Farina and Nahida, or if you need a little bit of damage to finish off the enemy. Be sure to weave in charge attacks to keep up the gauge, however. Once you're ready to use her skill again, your burst should be close to being ready, if not ready. Since she has 60 costs, it shouldn't be too hard to refill, as I said earlier. Immediately after using her skill, you will want to use her burst, and if you're a little short, you can of course just catch the particles and then burst right after you catch it while continuing to do normal attacks in the process. You will get a fat chunk of healing, and then you want to definitely activate her skill again to start getting a gauge on the enemy, then we're back at square one and we repeat the process. So let's review. Skill, burst, skill, rotational buffs, charge attack, normal attack spam while weaving in charge attacks if needed, skill, burst, skill, and repeat. If you're on the path of taking zero damage and running a Zong Li, then the rotation is as follows. Skill, rotational buffs, charge attack on Arlecchino, normal attack spam while weaving in charge attacks, then skill again until your characters are ready to rebuff Arlecchino, swap out to rebuff, then repeat the process and start with a charge attack. Burst only if healing is needed. In practice, it's really simple. Now, as far as her passives, I've explained the first one while I was talking about her gauge that fills on the enemy, but just know that her bond of life cap is really high, so that's great. Her second passive gives a nice 20% damage reduction as long as you have at least 3k attack. Every 100 attack after 1k attack will increase her damage reduction for all elements including physical. Now, the sad part about all of this is her quote unquote exploration passive. She cannot heal in combat from anything except for her burst. So, you may find yourself in a situation where you used your burst or you need emergency healing. Well, you don't have that now. You'll have to take the time to refill her burst to heal her. With good damage mitigation, this shouldn't be much of a problem, but I can see Arlequino accidentally taking too much damage and needing to heal early, or not having her heal ready. Outside of combat and an exploration though, she will be perfectly fine because she can heal from any source at that point. So I know what you're all thinking. Another Pyro DPS, huh? What makes her stand out? And to be honest, looking at it from a gameplay perspective, well, nothing. Albeit, her damage is the pinnacle of DPS. She can compete with Hu Tao at C0, but Hu Tao does trump her because of her versatility. Arlequino cannot heal from other sources and she needs her burst to heal, which greatly limits what team she can actually be used in. It's not a requirement for most people, but it is a soft requirement to have interruption resistance or shielding at C0. You can run her with no damage mitigation, but if you're against abyss bosses that hit really hard, then you will regret your life choices going in without any sort of damage mitigation. With that being said, if you're good at the game, you can go out there and take it as a challenge as it is now a high risk, high reward playstyle, but the reward is not that massive. 
Her damage healing is very high, but until she can get rid of the requirements for damage mitigation and shielding, then she can only be situationally the strongest. With all of that being said, she is an amazing character overall. She is very powerful at C0 and will serve you well. She will easily be able to clear Abyss, so if you don't have Hu Tower Yoimiya, or in an area of effect situation, always bet on Arlequino. If you've made it this far, then you must be enjoying the video, right? Go ahead and like this video and consider subscribing to really show your support. Alright, let's continue with the video. Let's discuss her artifacts because it's pretty simple at the end of the day. She will be getting a brand new artifact set that only she can use in the next update. So get to farming for half a year for this new set. Fragment of Harmonic Whimsy will be her undisputed best artifact set, as the 4-piece set will give her 54% damage increase with no downtime as long as you were using Arlequino correctly. Pretty good stuff. As a placeholder, however, you can run Crimson Witch if you're using a reaction team, and 4-piece Gladiator works with any other team, and you can also use 4-piece Shimanawa as another option, but I wouldn't really run that because you do kind of want her burst up. If you run her with Farina, then you can use the Hunter set as well, but only if you run her with Farina. Her HP will not fluctuate on its own, so she will need Farina to use that set. This isn't even optimal, it would force you into certain situations and certain specific rotations, so keep that in mind. The first two options are more practical. Now, let's talk about her weapon options and how a wonderful weapon design is indeed a factor for pulling. Arlequino's signature weapon is one of the most stylish weapons in the game, the Crimson Moon Semblance. It is unique in the fact that she is the only character that can activate the scythe portion of the weapon, which is pretty damn cool, but does nothing for gameplay. The weapon, however, is a very good option for her. It will grant her a decent chunk of bond to life when using a charge attack, and it will give an overall 36% damage increase after you activate all the passives, which you will do naturally. More bind of life is better, so it's a good signature option. The thing is though, it's very similar to Jade Spear. The Jade Spear will give 22% attack after getting full stacks and then a 12% damage increase from the passive, and Arlequino can easily stack up the Jade Spear. The benefits of her signature weapon is the increased bond of life, and I'll go over which one you should aim for a little later, her C1 or the weapon. Another good premium weapon option is the Staffahoma, as a universally good spear on all polearm users. She can make use of every 5 star spear as well, with Scoured Spine and Engulfed Lightning not being very great options, but usable depending on the circumstances. Among the 4 star spears, sadly she does not have a lot of good options. Deathmatch stands out as the best spear, but requires you to have bought the battle pass which a lot of people may have, but some people haven't. From the purely free-to-play options, I'd run... Man, there's really not a lot of choices. But if you were present during the Razor event, where they, they revealed Razor's parents and got the Missive Windspear, that's a decent option. Blackcliff Polearm is also usable, but I think the passive is very situational. You can save your Star Glitter and pick up a copy if you absolutely have no other options. As a last resort, White Tassel will work really well, probably better than the Missive Wind Spear, honestly, as it gives you a 48% normal attack damage boost and 23% crit rate, and if you have it at R5, then that's actually going to be a good option. If you don't have the White Tassel, head over to Chinyu Vale and hopefully you can grab a few because they only exist in Liwa Chest. Nowhere else besides Liwa Chest. So make sure that you do not burn them like I did. Now let's go over Arlequino and her teams and where you're going to want to pair her. So when you use Arlequino, you want to pair her with someone who can mitigate damage or shield. Keep in mind that this is not required however, and you can run full DPS teams as long as the bosses or monsters are not too threatening. In Abyss stages where you can take minimal damage, full DPS is the way to go, all the way. But against bosses that can easily one-shot you, run her with a shield or a damage mitigation. She has three options for teams and a few unique cases where she can actually work surprisingly well. Option 1, Vape Teams. I'd classify this as a single target oriented team, but it's definitely usable in most area of effect situations. She is able to vape pretty much everything with Sing Chu in all scenarios, and with Yilan, she can consistently vape single target situations. 
but in AoE, it's a little bit iffy, but still manageable if you can really make sure to use Elon properly. For Farina, it's inconsistent across the board, but if you run double Hydro, you won't have any issues. Sing Chu is a great option as he provides the damage mitigation that Articuno needs and very high Hydro application. Besides double Hydro, the other team option is going to be Kazaha or Sucrose, and you really want to use Bennett. The thing is with Kazaha is double swirling. I believe I can get it to work if you activate Arlequino skill, then use your Hydro character to apply enough Hydro and have her underlining aura, then swap to Kazaha to burst and swirl the Hydro, causing a Hydro swirl burst, and then back to Bennett to skill and burst. From there, you should have enough Pyro to immediately swap to Kazaha and then use his skill to actually swirl the Pyro. And then you will have double swirled and you should be good to go to go into Arlequino and start dishing out damage. I'll be doing some further testing to see how that works, but you can always just say fuck it and just do whatever. Her second option is going to be Mono Pyro. Zhang Ling, Bennett, and Kazaha will deal the most damage, but for a bit of survivability, you can run Zhang Li, Kazaha, and Bennett instead, and that will be a nice rounded team. Dia and Toma are also options, but Zhang Li will be better in most cases. This team's damage ceiling is extremely high with all of the damage amping from Kazaha and Bennett. And with Zhang Ling, this team will deal insane damage because Arlequino herself does insane pyro damage. Definitely a powerful team, but who isn't in a powerful team using the best three supports in the game? Her last meta team is going to be Overload, especially if you have C6 Chevreus. This will be pretty amazing overall because you can run Beto and do a quick swap counter gameplay. This is the team that I will have a lot of fun with since Arlequino can be swapped out at any time and keep her bond of life gauge up. I don't have C6 Chevreuse, but even without C6 Chevreuse, it will be a powerful team. You 100% want to have Fischl on this team though, as she is the best character for Overload. Thankfully, Chevreuse's buff only needs to attempt healing to actually apply the buffs, so Arlequino cannot heal from Chevreuse, but she will get the buff for increased damage. Another unique option is to run her as a Virgin Carry. She actually will have a long field presence with Nahida and Farina. It won't be the best team, but it's definitely an option. You could also do a burn team with Farlequino. She may struggle to actually mitigate the damage, but if you're using someone like Dia or Toma, then she won't really take too much damage from the burn. You'll want to run her with like double Animo in this case, and you'll want to heal her just in case some character takes some burn damage as well. Now, Farina teams. This is a contested topic because Arlequino cannot heal. She can heal once per rotation, so Farina can indeed work wonders with her. You can run something like Arlequino along with Yi Long or Sing Chu, Farina, and Jean. The thing is though, Arlequino cannot heal to add fanfare because of the way that her mechanics works. The timing for Farina's buff is really important because you want to maximize the damage buff that you actually get. If you start with Farina's buff, then by the time Arlequino hits the field and heals and does everything that she needs to do, the buff is going to be near running out. And you never want to start Arlequino off with her burst because you're going to reset all of the bond of life. This team will still work as Farina will drain Arlequino's HP, but Jean will top off your teammates for the damage boof and Arlequino herself cannot capitalize on maximizing fanfare. Arlequino is a standard 5 star pyro carry. Right. If we take into consideration her constellations, all of that gets thrown out the window because her constellations are kind of wild. Her C1 will increase her damage as well as add interruption resistance to her normal and charge attack, meaning the need for a shielder has dropped tremendously. She may still appreciate damage mitigation and she'll still take full damage, but you can comfortably run her almost anywhere now and shielding is really not that optimal anymore or necessarily needed. This also will greatly increase her normal attack damage, so this will be a greatly sought after C1 for quality of life and damage increase. One thing to note though, however, is that you'll only get the interruption resistance when she's doing charged and normal attacks. If you're dodging or standing skill and you happen to be hit, you will be sent flying. This isn't normally an issue, however, unless you're facing bosses that attack frequently and you fail to dodge an attack.
Her C1 will allow her to skip the 5 second charge up to activate her full damage potential. She also gets a large nuke when using her charge attack. When you absorb the bomb of the life from the enemies using a charge attack, the nuke will go off, dealing an insane amount of pyro damage. This cooldown is 10 seconds and doesn't even require energy like her burst, so it's kind of amazing. This is a great stopping point for you Arlequino mains who have been saving for months, <coughs> like me. Her C4 is a nice boost to her ER requirements and lets you burst more frequently. She gets 15 energy restored when she uses a charge attack to gain Bond of Life and usually she will decrease the cooldown by 2 seconds as well. Very decent quality of life but not too useful in the grand scheme of things because you should be able to refill her energy anyways if you actually run her when certain teams. Her C6 is massive in fact. Her burst will get an insane multiplier and her normal attacks will get a 10% crit rate increase and a 70% crit damage increase. This is a whale constellation and I plan on getting her during my second or third rerun. Or hey, maybe I get lucky during this run and pull like 3 Arlequinos like I see everyone else do on Reddit and the Hoyo Lab. So let's put this into perspective now. Her weapon or her C1? Now, the weapon design is pretty awesome, and the effects are good, but her C1 wins by a mile thanks to the quality of life that you get, and the increased damage to her normal attacks. If you have a good 5 star weapon like Jade Spear at Homa, and you don't care too much about the aesthetics, then the only thing that you want is damage, then C1 is better. Personally though, I'd rather her weapon as the design is flawless, and it'd still net you a decent damage increase. At the end of the day, Arlequino is a pyro carry. She isn't doing anything new as far as teams and you should pull for her if you like her design. She's not really a significant upgrade over Hu Tao unless you have C2 or above. I for one will be skipping her as I have several se 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 several pyro- Arlequino is the best pyro, no, the best character in the game. Her presence on your account will immediately increase the limits and push beyond the spectrum of power that you have sought, sought, after, sought, after, sought after. Do it for Father, the best thing to ever grace us and take that. With the gliding wingspan of an abyssal angel, Arlequina will allow you to taint your soul with the blood of the fallen. Do not waver in your cause and pull for her, or suffer the wrath, wrath, wrath of the House of the Heart. You have been warned. Despite me having several pyro mains, I will be pulling for her 100%. I have 350 witches saved up and I'm going to put them to good use. Good luck House of the Hearth mains. May Arlequino grace your account early and I wish you all the luck on weapon and constellations that you go for. Happy fapping Arlequino mains. Still here? Great. If you made it this far, that means that you enjoyed the video, yeah? Go ahead and like this video and show some support for this small channel. Stay tuned for more Arlequino content because I have a lot coming when she releases and even before her release. Until next time, Enigma.